Welcome back, Fish and Wildlife. Uh, we are going to wrap up this brief section on laws and regulations by talking about the role of the Department of Natural Resources, and then I'll get you started on your uh, next task, which is going to be a little web quest activity looking at our current laws and regulations. So each state's Department of Natural Resources analyzes fish and wildlife populations to create various laws and regulations. Now think to yourself, what may be some factors that are considered beyond simply the population when making these laws? And there's lots of them. So we don't just, when we make laws about white-tailed deer, for example, we're not just looking at the population of the white-tailed deer. We're also looking at the population of uh, organisms that are impacted by the white-tailed deer, like any potential predators or prey. And this goes for any species as well. We also look at uh, population trends over time instead of just the population in that very moment and talk about how those populations cycle, just like some of the labs we've done in class. Uh, we also look at the time of the year. That's a huge uh, influence depending on um, what species we're looking at the time of the year. We have different seasons for a reason, um, and that kind of correlates with different breeding trends and breeding patterns of different species. So we also look at um, that as well. There's so many different factors that go into creating laws and regulations, and we'll talk more about those uh, in class. The DNR also creates laws and regulations for ATVs um, or all-terrain vehicles, watercraft, etc. And there are a lot of other factors for these laws too. Some of these can include like noise pollution, residential areas, also age. That's an important one. When, can, when are you old enough? Um, or what types of education do you need to operate these different pieces of equipment? Um, these laws and regulations are all very important things to consider as well. And it's important that we're informed about those. So you really need to know these laws and regulations, like I said in a previous video, before we go up to the middle of the lake or before we go up to those deer stands. The goal of the assignment that I'm going to share with you here in a minute is to provide you with the skills to read and understand a regulation handbook. The regulations are going to change several times throughout all of our lifetimes. I'm not asking you to memorize the specific laws or regulations for Minnesota right now. I want you to have the skills to be able to find and identify and reflect on those different laws and regulations. I will provide you with three handbooks on Google Classroom. Your task is to read through these handbooks to find the answers to the questions I post to you. Your DNR uh, web quest is going to look something like this. So you will make a copy of this workbook and you will answer the questions by providing me the page number that the question, the answer to the question is found on, and then a brief answer. You don't need to write a paragraph, you don't need to write me a book, but I want you to identify the answer to each question. So you'll have the Minnesota Hunting and Trapping Regulations Handbook. There are several questions from that handbook. You will have the Minnesota Fishing Regulations Handbook, and you will have the Minnesota Waterfowl Regulations Handbook. You will read through all of these handbooks and find these answers, and when you are done, you will submit them online. If you have any questions for me, please feel free to reach out. Um, I'm always happy to help. Hopefully you find this to be an insightful activity and something that you can, uh, learning a skill that you can use for the rest of your life hunting and fishing. Thank you.